what's up? So this one's going to be my take on Michael Jackson's 10 most underrated songs. And I don't care about no racist but Mojo music. And I'm going to give Mojo they do. And when they have good Q&As and some of their music things are cool. But from years ago, a few years before Michael departed Earth, they ran a very biased, slanted cover story about the rise and fall of them first great black pop superstar. I'm like, they got bought out by Sony. I did not like that. So anyway, I saw, I do read the, a few peeps that they have in their magazine, but when they, what they did to Michael, they got bought out. But anyway, that's neither here nor there right now. My thing is going to be my 10 most underrated songs by Michael Jackson. And I will include a couple of things with the Jackson 5. Uh, one of them is Can't Get Over Losing You. I love that song that the Jackson 5 did with, with the great Willie Hutch. And Willie Hutch was doing the Mac soundtrack. And, um, you know, he was doing, um, um, you know, he did some great stuff, you know. Foxy Brown soundtrack for Pam Grier with Max Julian with the Mac. I mean, he had those sounds. You knew, you knew, you knew the Sam Cooke tone, but that guitar playing and that wah-wah and that funk. That Willie Hutch brought. So I love Can't Get Over Losing You. I love that groove and that melody. That was that was stinging. Another one that comes up is I Am Love. To me, it's so underrated with Michael Jackson and Jermaine because their voices and syncopation is scary. I mean, I love the way they harmonize with one another. This song had what I call metallic soul. So Slide of Family Stone meets Hendrix, but mid mid 70s, Mother's Finest. You hear a lot of you know, a lot of different things going on, but this song was beautiful. It captured their voices and the way those guitars are turned up and the groove. Very potent, very potent. You know, it's a strong groove. The Dennis Coffey Detroit thing going. It's so Michael's voice sounded great. Um, another one with a child's heart. And I sat there and listened to that. And I thought, man, it's got jazz chords and the melody and the beauty behind it. And it and you know, he sounded incredible. I mean, like I said, Michael Jackson, when he was a boy, he sounded like a 40-year-old man who went through the blues. And the melody and the way he did that little tone just was incredible harmony. Just mind-blowing how. But that song ain't going to get the kind of love it should, but it's one of them songs where he sounded dynamite. I mean, lights out. You know, that was a man singing them songs. Um, Fourth one would be Farewell, My Summer Love. Um, it came out in 84, Secret Vault record. But the thing about it is, is that his voice was dynamite. You know, the background vocals were kind of on a cheese ball, like punchy, and you could tell. But And it had like a 60s kickback with it. But man, Michael sounded incredible on that song. You know, he had his voice as a kid. I tell you, sometimes you debate which era is better. But his voice was fly and super fly. I mean, he, he was soulful. I mean, he just, he was he was putting it on. And that song was, he put that joint on that joint. Um, fifth song, I would say Push Me Away from the Destiny album. Love the harmony. Uh, love the way the, the, the tone, the phrasing, the Claire Fisher orchestrate arrangements. It sounded sensational. That's some slice of soul and a tone that he put on that song that that was like almost like the last of an era of Michael that you sit there and you're like, wow, that was a real innocence to, um, you know, very, very, very sincere, deep. Next song, I want to say song six, would probably be Time Waits for No One for the Triumph album. Because that was a nice ballad. That was a nice soulful ballad. Nice feel-good ballad. You felt the song. You felt the depth of it. Again, um, only Die Her fans know about that song, really. But it was it was a deep song. So that's probably like song six. Song seven, obviously, has got to be I Can't Help It. Because, I mean, the, the, the old off-the-wall heads know what I'm talking about. That song was... Stevie wrote that. Them jazz chords. Them da 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 da. You sitting there like, man, that thing was, that thing was like barbecue chicken off the bone, hit your ribs. It was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful piece of music. 
beautiful, soulful music. This mic was sounding great. Um, the next song, The Lady in My Life. Because Brad Templeton wrote this one for Michael. But he captured that 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 had that that if Michael had to been like a balladeer type of dude. What he did on Invincible Lady with Butterflies and uh Break of Dawn and all that. But the lady in my life was like that was a slice of life. Michael was singing that about that. You know, he was bringing it on that one. That was some that was some soulful singing there and a, that was a great song. You know. Didn't it wasn't a hit on them, but that was one of them songs that if he had ever did that one concert, did that unplug, the women's would have lost it. I mean, and dude, you set up, you take your girl behind that cut. That cut was the truth, yo. That cut was the truth. Um next song that I wanna say, um, that I um let me think. The next cut that I would wanna pick on would probably be um, leave me alone. Cause even though with the video and everything, the paranoia was cool. It had a nice catchiness to it. it had a nice catchy groove to it, and it was on point. And I loved the harmony and the tone and the groove was 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 happening. I like that. Uh, next cut, I would probably say, I'm so blue. That was his heartbreak song, and he had that on release. But you know, that was got to be by Donna Ross. But love the tone, love that harmonica. I think it was to- Toots Tillman who did the harmonica playing. That song was very potent. Michael had some Michael had some hammer ballads, so very slept on. That was a cut. You sit there and you feel in that cut. Next cut would be Someone Put Your Hand Out. Love that song. And I was like, man, if he had had that one behind Remember the Time in the Closet on Dangerous, and that was what was missing was that slow cut that was like, I got it, because that was a slow jam that was on punk. Loved the harmony, loved the texture. That was a slamming song. Um, the next one has got to be Strange in Moscow. Hardly one of the best songs that he wrote. One of the best songs of the 90s. One of, one of them songs that... Uh, it should have been even bigger than it was. It was an incredible piece of music. Love the, the what I call the, the newness of being a, a metaphor for another country, but also a metaphor for just of life, the vulnerability. That was a great vulnerable side of Michael. So that would be um, one of those songs that I would say that, you know. And the last one for me... Is that even though it wasn't a big hit, but it was on a kind of place. It was Break of Dawn. That that's like one of the best songs that Michael did. You know that that song was fit him to a to a to a T. It was very. I love the arrangement. I love Doctor Freeze. It was a great collaboration. I love around this time of year when it's fall. That song just kicks. It just has a nice sweet spot, and I love the, the phrasing and everything about it. So. I probably went more than 10, but that's Michael Jackson. That's one of my upper tier top all-time favorite artists. So, like I said again, any artists you want me to do, you got to have actual 10 songs. Michael Jackson had a bunch. Classic, great artist, the king of pop respect. Peace.